my experiences in the Center of Learning and Innovation, or CLI for short, I think really allow me to practice the clinical scenarios that I'm going to encounter commonly as a physician and as a resident in a safe way. A lot of scenarios can't be really you know, replicated in the hospital in a safe way for me to learn, and the CLI kind of provides me a safe environment for me to, to learn those skills. You have a scenario that you can encounter in the hospital, but you're running through it in a very controlled environment in the Sim Center. You have a mannequin and a team of simulation professionals who help train you and run you through the protocol, trying to make it as realistic as possible, mirror what happens in the hospital setting or in the emergency department setting, while nothing bad is actually happening to any patients, so this is where you make your mistakes. This is where you fail so that you can learn again afterwards. CLI is incorporated in the curriculum kind of from top to bottom. Starting from first year, there are CLI sessions that both incorporate simulations as well as standardized patients, um, where we have uh, actors and actresses kind of portray patients and allow us to practice different uh, physical exam maneuvers and different history taking elements. And so that's kind of sprinkled throughout the entire curriculum um, as well as part of our um, examinations during the end of each course um, where we kind of showcase what we've learned throughout the entire course. CLI is like integrated in every course. As soon as you walk in the door as an EMT, you start doing some EMT simulations. You pretend that the mannequin or the standardized patient that we interact with is someone you're picking up in their home. So you get that first look exposure from like week one of medical school. And then each course we have, we come back to CLI and we do some sort of simulation that interacts with the course. So if we're doing the, like the heart course, we'll do a case like the cardiac arrest. If we're doing the GI course or the gut course, we'll have a case where someone came in with nausea and vomiting and we have to work that up. And then after every course, we have what we call RA week or our examination weeks. So we come here to do uh, exams as well, where we have standardized patients and the mannequin patients to help us get evaluated. During almost every simulation, you know, I walk in and there's a rush of adrenaline because you're, for me, the first thing I want to know is what's going on. Is this patient okay? Is their airway okay? Are they breathing fine? Are they circulating their blood fine? Um, and it kind of all hits you at once because you've never, you've never seen this patient before. Uh, but then I think very quickly just because of how much we've been practicing and especially today, you know, once you went in and made that quick assessment uh, and felt very comfortable with your team, um, you kind of fall into this regular pattern that you've been practicing for so long. Uh, and that's sort of how I felt. I felt a lot more comfortable with it than I would have in my first or second year doing the same exact case. In medicine, reflection is a very important part of learning. Uh, I think that a lot of times situations don't go perfectly right. In medical school, we learn about the different disease states. Um, we learn about how to handle patients, and all of that is very theoretical. And when we get to the real world, a lot of things don't go exactly as we are taught or as we hope. And each time we see a patient, we want to use that experience to kind of maximize our education. So using the debrief, allows us to look back and say, okay, this is what went right and this is what went wrong, um, and kind of use that, that every opportunity to learn and kind of improve ourselves. Great, how's everybody doing today? Good. All right. Good. Good, awesome, great job with the sim. We're gonna take about the next 30 minutes to debrief our session. Okay, so I just have two rules. Uh, this works best if you all participate while we're going, and if you each just speak one at a time, um, this will go well. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so my first question is, how did that go for you? How did that case go for you? I think sometimes like these situations can get really chaotic um, and I felt that we had a good amount of organization and people weren't really running around. Everyone had a assigned role and followed it. Hi Lori, what's going on? Uh, Mr. Clay was telling me he had a squeezing chest pressure. Mm -hmm. I rated it an 8. I was doing the EKG and then that's what I saw on the monitor. Okay. It, it looks, looks like consciousness. It looks like the attack. Can we check for pulse please? Alright, check the carotid pulse. I do not feel a carotid pulse. Alright, please start compressions, lower the head of the bed. But when I came in, everybody kind of followed my lead, so I feel like I became the leader of the group. Um, and it was very easy to like designate tasks, and there was a lot of closed loop communication that I thought went really well. One of the things I liked the most was actually, uh, as soon as we walked in the room, you gave us the story right away without even prompting, which I think was very necessary. It got the ball rolling, and it got everything started before 
you know, it, it got all our minds in the right place right at the start. Yeah, the debrief is my favorite part. It is one of those things that I walk out of the room, and especially today I walked out of the room and I was like, oh my god, did I do the right thing? So it's literally someone telling you on the other side like what you did wrong, what you did right, how you can improve, what you should continue doing, and I think that's the most vital part of this. What's the standard we use to help take care of that patient in that rhythm? So what are we, what are we guidelines that we use for that? Um, so I was thinking back to the ACLS guidelines, um, which designates um, what you do with a patient who has pulseless VTAC. Um, and I kind of went through the algorithm that is like very well designed about when to start CPR, when to administer uh, shocks, when to check for pulse, uh, when to do a pulse check, and then when to administer medications. Ready to shock? Ready to shock? Ready to shock, John? Yep. All right, everyone clear? I'm clear. Clear. You're clear. Shock delivered. Okay, shock delivered to 15 Switch. 20. Sounds like I'm hearing some themes of some teamwork, communication, some closed loop communication, role assignments. So um, I definitely saw some of that as going on. So you're actually segueing me into my first thing that I noticed, which was the minute you came into the room after Lori called for help, you all fell into your roles. And I wondered to myself, how did that come to be? Maybe you can help me understand that. You practice your role over and over again. You assign roles. You know who a designated team leader is. Um, and this way, uh, everything becomes very regimented and everything becomes uh, very practiced, which I think helps with the flow, as James was saying earlier. What helped me, even though my back was turned, is that she called people by name and task, and I heard my team members yell out, yes, whatever the task was. Mm -hmm. So there was a call out and a check back. Is it's one thing to actually practice the physical skills and like what the words that come out of your mouth. It's another thing to go back into the room, figure out if those skills were correct, and then also talk about the science underneath it. So sometimes those debriefs aren't just about communication skills, which is super important, but it also can be about the basic science and help us learn even deeper into the material that's at hand. This experience helps me learn because it's really difficult to practice some skills in the hospital. Um, I think that the cardiac arrest example today was a, was a great one. Um, you don't often get to see a cardiac arrest in the hospital. It's a very rare event. Um, and at the same time, it's one of the most you know, high stakes events as well because you, know, you only have a few minutes to kind of figure out and reverse the problem quickly, but safely as well. And um, as you know, a medical student, oftentimes my role is kind of be more as an observer um, in the hospital. But yet, you know, when I'm a resident, I'm expected to kind of run these codes by myself. Having the opportunity to practice really allows me to kind of get more comfortable with the people who are going to be around me, um, what needs to be done, um, and kind of how to deal with these situations generally. This experience really helps me do things that I'm uncomfortable with. And it forces me to do them, um, because sometimes in the hospital, uh, as a med student, it can be very intimidating to go into your first patient room without ever seeing a patient before. So CLI, or the Center of Learning and Innovation, allows us to come in prepared and have already seen patients and pretended to see patients or pretended to undergo a cardiac arrest and pretend to do CPR, which is our first time. So when we go see it in real life or when we have a patient in real life, um, we know what to do and we don't feel like we're fumbling over our words or fumbling over our movements or can't remember medications, things like that. So it's been exceptionally helpful to have that practice. It also helps a lot with communication. Um, you're working a lot with the team um, and we, wrote, we change the teams up all the time. These are not set teams that we go in with across the four years. So you work with 99 other students mixing and matching. Um, you really learn how to communicate with a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds, all kind of in focus to better the patient experience, to best treat this patient with whatever they're going through. In our case today, it happened to be a cardiac arrest. My best advice for, for any incoming medical student is, is to just to take every opportunity, whether it's a simulation, whether it's seeing a patient, um, and try to maximize the educational value from that. Um, some things you're going to see only once, and to kind of recognize that. And, and take every single opportunity to learn um, that you that you have, you know, whether it's through simulations, through its clinical, um, through you know just the curriculum. Every opportunity we have is just something to learn from, and I think if you have that perspective and know that there's a patient on the other end that you could 
save a life or you can make somebody feel better or you can make a family member cope better that having that perspective is also really great too.